This is the 40th anniversary of the enactment of the Clean Water Act by the United States Congress, signed into law 40 years ago. Uh, and it's so important that we understand that water is life. Uh, human beings want to live near water. They want to work near water. They want to be near water. But they also want that water to be clean. And so that's what our mission is all about. We have to have clean water in the state of Illinois. And we've been blessed by God with great and abundant water resources. We have the Great Lake Michigan behind us. It uh, also is a situation where in Illinois we have 583 miles of the Mississippi River as our border, the big river. And we have the Illinois River uh, that connects the Great Lake to the big river. Uh, we have lots of other waterways all across Illinois. And we want to make sure they're clean and fresh and pure. And we have to make sure that our drinking water is safe. And so we have to invest in that. Our water mains and everything connected to drinking water, we have to make sure that it meets 21st century standards. It's very important that we do this, and we have to make sure that we invest money of the people, uh, we the people, to make sure we have clean drinking water. We also have to deal with wastewater. And our state over the years has had a program that's done exactly that. But today we're announcing a $1 billion initiative for clean water, bigger than ever before in Illinois, on the anniversary of the Clean Water Act. And it's something that we can all work together on because not only is this important for our health, our public health, to have clean water, uh, but it's also important to our economy. Uh, we have many, many leaders of labor here today, uh, men and women who know how to get the job done on time, under budget, and they understand how important the work is when it comes to clean water. This initiative of $1 billion investment in clean water will create more than 28,000 jobs all across Illinois. And that's something that we all believe in. <laughs> clean water equals jobs. And we have to remember that at all times, that uh, these investments where men and women are working together uh, whether it's in engineering or construction or you name it, uh, th these are investments that pay dividends for a lifetime. Unfortunately, some of our water mains today in Illinois and different towns are over 100 years old. They've lasted a long time. They do need to be replaced. And it's important that we replace them with the kind of quality that will last another century. And that's why it's so important that we band together in the best traditions of Illinois. We understand in our state how important clean water is because in our Constitution, we have an environmental article. It was enacted 40 years ago. And the people of Illinois said at that time, and they've said for all time, that everyone is entitled to a healthful environment. That means clean air and it means clean water. And it also says in our Constitution that it's the duty of every person to provide and maintain a healthful environment for this and future generations, not just for our time, but for our children and their children and their grandchildren. You know, it's incredibly important that we take the time to think about the importance of water in our lives, because this is an aus auspicious time. The Clean Water Act has had incredible benefits for this city, for this state. But I can tell you from where I sit day in and day out for our nation. In the past four decades, we have kept billions of pounds of sewage and chemicals and trash out of our waters. We've seen urban waterways go from wastelands and dumping grounds to community centerpieces, bustling with redevelopment and activity, a place, as the governor said, where people want to be. We have doubled the number of American waters that meet safety standards for swimming and for fishing. We've developed incredible science, and we've spurred innovations on the side of technology for clean water. Today, 92% of Americans have round-the-clock access to safe, clean drinking water that meets all of our national health standards. And more than two-thirds of, of America's waterways meet water quality standards. That's quite a record. But 
There's always a but. Even after 40 years of progress, we face some new challenges. After four decades of clean water protection, the American people don't want to see us going back. A Gallup poll recently said that 75 percent of Americans worry a great deal or a fair amount about pollution. Why? Because it's pollution in their rivers, their lakes, their reservoirs, their drinking water. It touches their lives and their families every single day. Clean, healthy water is something that people expect and certainly deserve. So it takes partnerships, partnerships at the state level, partnerships with communities. And with that partnership, EPA has pledged to work to meet the expectations of the American people. That's why we've done things like launch our Urban Waters Partnership, to help make urban waters and rivers new destinations for businesses and places where residents can come together as a community. It's also why we're part of the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, our president's path-setting effort to set a new standard of care for waters that define this city and this region, and support one and a half million jobs each and every year. At Chicago's beaches and swimming, swimming bands and advisories were at a five-year low last summer. After more than two decades of frustratingly slow progress, we're investing in restoring toxic hot spots in the Great Lakes, what we call areas of concern. And it's why we're so proud to be working with the state of Illinois and the city of Chicago on a range of local efforts. You know, I was just thinking that without water, and if it wasn't clean, uh, we'd be in seriously bad shape. But let me say that a billion dollars is a lot of money. 28,000 jobs, that's a lot of work opportunity. So I want to commend our governor and the Illinois General Assembly for not only their vision, but their willingness to put money where their thoughts are. And that is to make sure that the state of Illinois has the kind of environmental protection that we have clean water and clean waterways and opportunities for people to work, making sure that that happens. So Governor Quinn, I give you kudos and I give all of the members of the Illinois General Assembly the same kind of accolade. I also want to welcome what many people have called the most effective member of the President's Cabinet, and that is the Administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency, our Administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency, Lisa Jackson. It is a pleasure to have you here with us. And I heard the Governor saying, you know, you got out of uh, all of these academic institutions and summa cum laude. And I was so delighted when I left the University of Arkansas, thank you, Laudy, <laughs> that uh, I, I, I didn't quite know what to do. But we are continuing. You know, we talk about the economy. We talk about the difficulty of finding resources to do those things that are necessary and are essential. And so it takes a level of creativity. It takes a lot of mishmashing. It takes a great deal of massaging to come up with what you need in order to carry out the vision. I don't intend to do any of the work on any of these waterways. I try to stay in the other direction. But I am delighted that we have, in our congressional district, where we are right now, which is I call the most fascinating piece of geography in North America, known as a political subdivision. And so we have everything west of us. We have everything north of us, south of us. But we also have this eastern part. And it's a magnificent view. Everybody ought to get a chance to come to the Chicago lakefront and just take a look. So again, thank you, Mr. Governor. Thank you, Administrator. And thank all of the members of the Illinois General Assembly for making this day possible. Thank you very much. Yeah, well said there, Danny. Thank you.